That I hope that's the case. I don't know if it is. I think that the message it could potentially send is that come to the government well, there's more for you here as well. And it does embolden politicians who could say, well, now we have helped Freddie and Fannie, maybe for all the right reasons you state, uh, but it will certainly make it easier to provide these big bailouts and rescue packages. And along the way, I think it does maybe embolden the very type of behavior I'm sure you want to address, Warren. And I think that in other institutions' cases, uh, they might feel, you know, guys, we can go ahead and do what we're doing because when push comes to shove, no one's going to let us fail, right? Well, they're going to let the equity fail for sure. I mean, they've done that even on these cases. And, uh, you know, it, it, it certainly, I mean, there's people losing money on on all kinds of loans all over the country where the, where the government is not bailing them out. But there's no question that every time you step into one situation, even though you don't bail out the equity at all, but even every time you step into one situation, you can be sure that the next guy that needs money will come in and cite that as, as an example of why you should take care of him, too. That's why I think it's very important that essentially the equity get nothing in all of these situations. Well, I agree, but could I ask you this? What is the big thing that you feared the most had we just said to Freddie and Fannie, that's it, it's over? Well, I, I, at that point, you would have had about, you know, $5 trillion. You'd have had about a billion and a half of direct debt of the two, and then you'd have had about $3.5 trillion of guarantees uh, that people, certainly in case of the guarantees, that thought the government was behind, and, and the government had given them lots of indications that was the case, and you would have had $5 trillion as a is a big sum to have revalued out, you know, throughout the world. I, I, I really think it would have, it would have set off a tsunami in mm. financial markets that sure. you well, and I wouldn't like to see. Warren, I, it's Cheryl Cassoni again. I have a question. Since we're talking about bailouts, the automakers are going to be heading to Washington. They're looking for 50 billion in short-term loan, loans over three years. Does this add to the argument that they deserve government help? Well. No, I don't think it does add to the argument. They'll use the argument. I mean, I, I wouldn't blame him if I were running one of the auto companies. I'd use that argument too. But, but uh, no, I don't think it changes it for for the auto companies. I don't think it changes for the auto suppliers. I don't think it changes it for the airlines or you know any other. Or, or look at the retail organizations that have gone broke recently. I don't think linens and things can put on <laughs> go, go down to Washington and say you know that it's in the national interest to to bail us out. Yeah, that's true, Warren. It's Liz as we finish up here. Um, Fannie and Freddie are still trading right now. Uh, would you buy them here? I know you don't talk about what you would buy, but that, that's what certainly is left out there as, as the crucible. Well, the government right now, as I understand it, has a warrant which gives them 80% of the equity, which actually didn't cost them anything you know, in terms of this billion preferred that they received. That, that carries. So if there's any recovery for the common, which is problematical, 80% of it will go to the Treasury. So I would say... That, even a dollar a share, if, you, if I had to, for a three-year period, if I had to go long or short, I'd probably go short. But, <laughs> but shorting, a, shorting a one dollar stock is a little like, well, shorting a one dollar stock, Liz, is a little like jumping off a pancake. <laughs> hey, Warren, it's Eric Paul here. Real quickly, a lot of people make a lot of this, how much this bailout is going to cost taxpayers. Well, in your best guess, I know a lot of it has to do with what happens in the housing market over the next two or three years. Is it a $20 billion bailout or a $200 billion bailout? No, nobody knows. I wish I'd, you know, I don't know the answer to it. It could be zero. It could be, it could be, you know, it could be in the hundreds of billions. It, it, it just depends on what house prices do. If house prices go down another 20% from here, it'll be a big loss. Oh, if they go down another 5% from here, it, it may not be any loss at all, and I just don't know the answer to that. Warren, thank you for joining us. I hear you're uh, heading to Boston to throw out the first pitch at Fenway Park. Have you been fix working your arm? Uh, just watch the heat tomorrow night. <laughs> We will. Okay. We will. Thank you, Warren Buffett, Chairman okay. and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway.